Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue with this series on Python. In the last video we have talked about operator overloading, right? Which simply means you have an operator like plus, minus or division or multiplication. So the operator will remain same but the operands will change, right? The type of parameters we are passing it will change. Example, when you say plus, we are calling the add method, right? And add method takes different types of parameters or different types of arguments. So that is overloading, so which simply means you have the same method name but the arguments are different or maybe the number of arguments or the type of arguments are different. In the same way, we have two more types in polymorphism. One is method overloading and method overriding. So what it means, let's start with the first one which is method overloading. Now languages like Java, C Sharp or any other OOPS language, they have this concept of method overloading which is not there in Python. But what exactly it is? So it simply means if you have a class and in that class if you have let's say two methods with the same name but different parameters or arguments, it is called as method overloading. Example, let's say if you have student class and in student class if you have two methods, let's say average. So we have two methods with the same name average. One takes two parameters, one takes three parameters. This is called as method overloading. But in Python, we don't have this concept. So we cannot create two methods with the same name. The next one is method overriding, which simply means you have two methods with the same name and same number of parameters or arguments. Okay, so that means can we create two methods with the same name in same parameter in the same class? Of course not, not in the same class. But let's say if you have a concept of inheritance, we have class A and class B and both the class have the same method with the same name, same parameter. This is called as overriding. Again, we'll see the impact of that. Let's start with the method overloading first. So if you want to achieve method overloading, what I will do is I will just remove this methods from here, just to keep it simple, right? So we got a init method and it is working perfectly. Let's remove all the extra stuff from here. We just want to create one object, not even two. I want to add two numbers. So I have to create a method, let's say sum, and this sum will take two arguments, we'll say, uh, a and B. So I want to add two values. That's it. Nothing complex. I want to add two numbers. Now if you want to add two numbers, what I will do is I will say S is equal to A plus B and at the end we'll return S. That's what we want to do here. We would just want to return the value of S. Okay. And if you want to work with that, you will say S1. In fact, you will print the value. You will say S1 dot sum and you want to add two numbers here. I will say 5 and 9. And let's see if it is working. Let's run this code and it works. You can see we got 14. So yes, we can create a method inside a class which takes two parameters and we can pass two parameters. It works. What if, if you want to pass three values, you want to pass five, nine and six. Now this is not possible, right? The moment you run this code, you will get an error because you are passing three parameters or you're passing three arguments and you're accepting only two. So this will not work. That means you need to create another method called a sum which will take three arguments. That's what we do in other languages. But here we'll not do that. Here what you can do is you can also use third variable. You will say C, you got A, B and C and you will simply say A plus B plus C, right? So this will work. So if I run this code, and you can see you got 20 and this is why you, you will get 20. So we are passing three arguments and we are accepting three arguments, it will work. But what if I'm not passing third argument, I'm passing only two arguments. And now the problem starts, right? Because you are expected to pass the third argument as well. How do we solve this? To solve this thing, we can use a concept where you will say A is equal to none. So this is one option. The other option, we can use the variable length arguments. If you remember, we have done that before, uh, the star and variable name. But this is another option. You can say all the values are by default none, which means even if you don't pass the value, this is default arguments, right? So even if you don't pass the value, the default value will be none. So that means even if you don't pass any value, example, even if you don't pass five and nine, it will work all the values will become none. I want to pass some values, I will say five comma nine. I'm passing with two values, right? Let's start with third one. Let's say I want to pass three values, five comma nine comma six. All these values will be assigned to A, B and C respectively, right? So five will go to A, nine will go to B and six will go to C. So these values will be replaced by none. So none will be replaced by these values, right? So now, once I know this, so we can simply add it, but what if you're passing two? So in this case, you will check. So before adding, you will check. You will check if A is not equal to none, B is not equal to none, and C is not equal to none. So if none of them are none, that simply means you're passing three arguments, right? And if you're passing three arguments, this is the calculation we have to go for. You will say S is equal to A plus B plus C, 
and you want to declare as outside so that you can use it from anywhere so you will say s is by default zero and you got this otherwise if let's say if i'm passing only two arguments i'm not passing the third argument in that case it will go to lf and inside lf i will check i forgot a colon here so inside lf i will check if a is not equal to none so i'm concerned about a and b if they are not none in that case, I will say S is equal to A plus B because we're not concerned about C, right? And then we can go for one more condition. What if you pass only one parameter or one argument? In that case, you will say else and you will say S equal to A. So when you say only one parameter, let's say if I'm not passing nine and six, I'm passing only five. So it will return five, right? That's what we want. So we can do that. Else part is not required here, but just to make it more effective, we can pass one argument, we can pass two arguments, we can pass three arguments. That's perfect. Let's run this code. And it worked. You can see we got 20. Now if I pass only 5 and 9, even this will work because if you pass only 5 and 9, C will get none and it will execute LF. And you can see we got 14. Now if you pass only one value, let's say 5, in this case, if you run this code, you got 5, right? That's how it works. So this is your method overloading. So we are overloading methods, but then we are not doing directly because it doesn't support in Python. So we are doing some trick. The next one is method overriding. So let's go with that. Let me just remove this code. And let's once again take a simple example. And we'll, this time we'll go for A and B. I love these classes. So what I will do is let's say we have a class A. Okay. And in this class A, we have a function. I will say function name is, or the method name is show. And in this method, I will simply print in a show now first of all before going ahead this concept is method overriding this is very famous in software industry you know so in future videos uh, we'll also talk about this thing when we talk about interfaces and abstract classes this concept is used very heavily okay so make sure that you understand this concept properly maybe with simple example like a and b but understanding the concept is important here we can go with complex example as well concept is important so let's say we got class a which has a method which is show and we are printing in a show that's it nothing fancy now if i create an object of a here so if i go back and if i say a1 is equal to a so we are creating object of a right and with the help of this we can call show if you're on this code you can see we got in a show that perfectly work now what if you create another class let's say class b okay and now imagine this class a is a parent and class b is a child example let's say this is my dad and this is me so we have b here and time mean i'm not writing anything here we say pass i just want to keep it empty okay so we are keeping it empty let me create object of b not a but let me create object of b and let's run this code and you can see we got an error it says b object has no attribute as show of course right in b we don't have anything at this point you will use a concept of inheritance and you will say hey b inherits a so when you say b inherits a it means you will get all the features of a to b and let's run this code and you can see we got in a show because of course right in b we don't have show the moment you run this code it will first search for the method show inside b now since we don't have that it will go to a to search it and that's how it works so before going ahead, let me tell you one story, a small story. I've used this story in multiple examples when I was teaching Java as well. So the concept is when I was in my 11th standard, when I've just joined my college, I was not having any phone. Okay. So a lot of people, they used to ask me which phone you have. So I should say, I don't have any phone. Okay. Because I was not having a phone, but then this question got repeated multiple times. Then I realized, okay, I have to say something. Now at that point, my father was having a phone, which is Nokia 1100. I was not having any phone. So whenever someone used to ask me, which phone you have, I used to say, I got Nokia 1100. I don't have a phone, right? But my father's has a phone. So father's phone is my phone. That's how things works, right? So since uh, B, I'm B, my father is A, so B inherits A, so I got all the features. In this case, uh, show is in, in A, right? In B, we don't have show. After some time, you know, after a few months, I got a new phone and that is Motorola phone. So my father has a Nokia phone and I got Motorola phone. Now, if you ask me which phone I have, of course I would say Motorola, right? I would not say Nokia right because my phone overrides my father's phone that's what will happen here the moment you create a show method inside b as well and if you try to print in b show because see when we were not having show inside b it was going to a now since we have show inside b it will print the show of b right so if you ask me which phone i have now so i will say motorola not nokia right so my phone overrides my father's phone in the same way this show overrides the earlier show method 
So this is how you work with method overriding. Again, we'll be doing this concept more in the next tutorials when we talked about abstract classes or interfaces. But this is awesome, right? Remember this point, when you call show, it will call the show method of this subclass if you have it, okay? So that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this session. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos.